our team name is Mobile Multi Sensor System D. And today we will present our learning in the seamless tracking and detect, uh, motion detection system based on the inertial navigation system and GNSS and the vision techniques. And before the presentation, I want to share a Twitter with you guys. Like uh, two years ago, I saw this Twitter. It said that my grandma is 75 years old, and each morning she told uh, she told us that she need to send a face smell face to her best friend to make sure that each of the are still alive and they woke up this morning. So it. This story impressed our research team uh, very much. So when we decided to do this project, we, we think that, oh, maybe we can do something to uh, implement something like this. Like um, this, we can not only, we, we can do things like, we want to detect the motion of uh, one person. And also if something happened to this person, we detect that this person did not move for a long time, this person fall down, something like this, then we can send the exact position to someone who can help this person. Like, uh, this, can not, uh, this can also be used for, for hikers. Like, for me, I love hiking, I love touring speed, and I know that for hiking, we need to wear some security sensors. Like for example, GPS smartphone. Um, it's about four hundred dollars from Sporting Life or Sports Check, whatever. Like we uh, for touring ski, we also need to buy G three skiing package. It's about four hundred dollars. And but there is a subscription for those kind of devices. Like people assume that those kind of people, when they have when something happened to them, they are awake and they can use the smartphone and they can send a message to like 911 ask, ask someone to help them but sometimes if it happened we lost our man we like we are not we who can help us so that motivates us to develop uh, those kind one kind of product like we can detect the person's motivation and we can help them to decide if we need to send security uh, like ask for help for, from other people. So uh, in this project we use the uh, GPS from hemisphere and the ball sensors from TDK, also the, the camera sensors we got and we try to use as much sensor as possible because we have it, right? Uh, the camera, the, the IMU, and it's a small example that if we can detect some, somebody fall down and we can help them to send exactly position to someone who can help them. This is our research team and it's uh, Guangzhou, Ira, me, my name is Yang and Ilir. So um, I just decided what kind of customer group and our team members. Next on, I will say something about the background and the methodology part and demo. So the first part is the inertial, nav uh, inertial navigation part. Before that part, I want to introduce our system. Like what is seamless tracking detection system? It's a technology that can provide location or position in indoor and outdoor environment and also can detect the uh, exceptional condition or status of the users. Like I just said, if this person did not move for a long time, if there is a sudden fall happen to this person, then we can ask for help. So currently, uh, in the world, there are more than 25,000 developers who are focused on pedestrian navigation or location servers. And those are, there are many big companies but the problem is that if we only, we don't sell positions for positions, like we need to do something else, like uh, we need to ask for help or we need to do some location or space-based service. And this slide shows our motivation. I think that the wide application and the big market value motivate us to do research in this area. Like, um, for uh, navigation part, it can 
uh, help us to do, to do wayfinding, parking lot, location, or some security guide. And also uh, from the top right figure, we can see that this, this is a survey made by marketing and markets. It says that by the end of 2021, the location-based service market will arrive 77.8 billion is uh, a big number, right? And this is the current techniques we can use for um, pedestrian or user tracking or location. And it, they are inclu uh, including Wi-Fi technique, camera or map-based techniques, inertial sensors, Bluetooth, DS. Uh, for in, in this project, we use the camera-based uh, techniques Inertial sensor and GNSS technique, and those are the sensors we use. Uh, I think most of them are shown there. We use those kind of sensors because we, as I mentioned, we try to use as much uh, sensors as we have to do the right and accurate detection. And but. But each of the sensors has their own limitation. For example, the IMU, the IRA grows with uh, time. For G, uh, GSS, definitely we cannot use it indoors. And for uh, the vision-based te uh, techniques, sometimes is uh, we need to suffer from computational burden. So uh, we want to integrate different kind of sensors. And for our project, those kinds of three sensors can all help in getting an accurate position and uh, at the same time they can help us to detect the motion of the users. So this is the system structure, like we use um, two GSS system and inertial sensors and the camera. For outdoor we can use those three sensors at the same time. For indoor we can use the inertial sensor and the cameras. And as mentioned, those kind of three sensors can all help us to detect the user's motion. And uh, for this structure, we will introduce later in detail. And for the inertial part, um, as we know, TDK provide two balls for us. One is uh, uh, 048 and the other is uh, 789. And the, the, I think the main difference between them are one is has magnetometer and the other has pressure sensor. And because we consider about the uh, what the temperature and the time issues, so we select the first one and we, we don't use the pressure sensor. And the right figure shows the sensors include in SCM 20948, there are um, three uh, accelerometers, three gyroscopes, three magnetometers. We can use the map sensors to get the uh, relative position for the users. And to use this kind of board, there is a problem we need to, not problem, there is one thing we need to consider about that. For the IMU sensors, there are always an uh, arrow like for this uh, two figures, we just put the sensor on the desktop. The the output should be zero zero one or all zeros, but we can see that there are some in, uh, outputs uh, they are not equal to zero. So to you, that's why the arrow, uh, the IS derived position the arrow grows with time. So uh, to test uh, what I just mentioned, we, we do a test in the CCIT building from CCIT to ENG and the, this figure shows the test environment and the design trajectory. And we can see that uh, the, poor, the pure inertial sensor derived position, there is a big heading arrow, is different from the design trajectory. So that's why we do this with some camera sensors or some uh, camera based fingerprinting methods, which will be uh, described by my friends lately. And those uh, how we use inertial sensor to do motion detection is a very simple example that if there is a sudden fall, the accelerometer's output and the gyro data output will have a 
sudden fall, and we can use some threshold to detect if this person is still move or there is a sudden fall. And I use a single, uh, simple video to show that the uh, only if we only use the map sensors, I mean the IMU, we can detect the human being's motion. Like for example, we only need three uh, gyroscope and accelerometer we mounted on our hands, and then we can use it to detect the motion. So the other part is. Okay, so uh, from the investigation, the Google, let's mention that uh, we spent 25% in the other environment, the other around three four times in the indoor environment. So let, but we spent less, much less time between the outdoor game and indoor, but less again between the indoor game and outdoor. So we want to achieve a similar checking or positioning to give the more accuracy positioning system. Since we all have the background from the positioning or navigation, so first of first of all, we also the thing we said so the bar is how to improve the accuracy. But the thing is that we need to create the value or create the scenario based on this position. So in this project, we try to give some add value on the like the motion detection based on the positioning system. So as the my teammate mentioned, that we can use the smartphone, the initial sensor to calculate the some information, and then we can do the motion detection, like walking, lie down, get up, or the handshake, and something like that. But the thing is that all of the wearable sensor or portable sensor is only focused on the user. So how can it possible that we can use the sensor to help other people to detect their motion? Because we live in a group, we care about each other. So, as the as uh, as the device we have there, we instead of using the traditional RGB image, we try to use the more powerful camera like the old sponsor by us, the RGB sensor. And uh, in this video, I take the Kinect for example. Kinect originally used for the TV games that you can control. You can play the game without your without using the joystick. You just use your body. So the idea is that we can use the RGBD image to detect, generate the skeleton of your body, and then we can extract some important information such as the height of your head, the velocity of your head, the information of your waist to do the motion detection, and then we can send the information to the cloud server. So this figure shows that uh, this figure shows that we can use the Kinect to detect the structure, the skeleton of the people, and the based on your different kind of motion, then we have different kind of behavior. So once you fall, fall down, like this figure shows that we have, have show some information to the cloud server or to other users. So this example shows that we care about our head. And so we try to extract some information from high velocity. So the figure there are three light charts shows the, the velocity of the head, the, the height of the velocity, and we based on these two values we can calculate the risk the risk number of risk index of the this user. So I would like to use the video. Then we just try we use the Kinect to do the demo yesterday. So as the people get into the view and uh, you can detect the structure and the falling down and uh, you can see the value, the change, the vibration of the head velocity and head height and uh, you can see the last one is the risk value of your this user and uh, once it's over the threshold and we, we trust that uh, we suppose it have some problem. And uh, based on the uh, based on the camera, we based on the camera, the sponsor gear, then we can have a more powerful camera that can provide high set, high set for inverse. So we try to think about we can use this kind of camera attached on the human body because the last one show that we fix the camera, we fix the camera in the same place. But we, if we can have a more powerful camera, we can fix on the head of the user, and then we can not only detect ourselves. 
and we, we can detect other people, like this video show, we can detect the people in front of us to get the, the, to get the skeleton of these people and uh, we can try to do the motion detection based on this information. So just this video, this, this video is filmed by uh, our group member and we try to use the sponsor's information like the depth image to detect the skeleton. Yes. Uh, for this part, I would like to introduce some technologies by using GNSS receiver uh, to make the attitude determinations. Uh, I would like to say also we use like uh, hemisphere high uh, I mean high performance receivers here to make an example uh, in but in uh, practical application uh, maybe the a smaller uh, GPS receiver will be uh, capable in our uh, in our in this presentation or in uh, in, my, in our work so it's just a sim simple example we will not really use the uh, hemisphere receiver for our application so uh, for this slide, I would like to uh, introduce something about the uh, baseline. Well, Victor, uh, as we know, that's a G the G GNSS receiver can provide us uh, positions in uh, our, our center, our fixed our fixed free. Uh, we can use uh, trans transition metrics uh, with respect to the latitude and longitude to. Uh, transfer the ECF free positions to the local level free positions. Uh, by this way, the two GNSS receiver are chosen here to uh, measure the attitudes uh, to uh, like to uh, aid the body motion capture. And I make some ex uh, examples since the the, the real uh, receiver is not available to be like uh, to be tested to be tested on our body. So I just do some simple examples. For example, if we stand normally like the uh, like the left left picture and the baseline vector can could be could be uh, could behave like the like the uh, green line. But if we have a sudden for that, and uh, the baseline vector could be uh, could behave like the yellow line. So there, there, there should be a, a light shift between these two, uh, uh, these two situations, these two situations. So we can use this kind of uh, characteristics to detect the uh, attitude uh, attitudes by using two GNS receiver. And uh, there are four like four pictures to show when we uh, work when we work normally how this uh, vector base, uh, baseline vector could be could behave. And here's the summary for the normal baseline vector and the uh, uh, abnormal uh, uh, baseline vector. So uh, which I uh, I mean the pitch and the row rotation will be essential to detect this like uh, to be used to detect the uh, this run or this sudden happening uh, about the fall down. So if the pitch or row rotation uh, suddenly change more than forty five degrees, and uh, also if the I mean this change. This change duration could last for one minute, two minutes, or two minutes, or uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. We would like to see that something wrong, maybe something wrong has happened to a person, and also some other sensors, constraints would be used to uh, also, uh, to detect how how this like, like wrong situations happen or if it is happened. And uh, uh, we also make some uh, com comparisons with uh, two receive two GNS receiver uh, attitude determination and the traditional IOS uh, attitude determination for the body motion. Uh, for the GNSS receiver, it could 
It could be used to improve the pitch roll accuracy uh, and it uh, provide absolute positions and then it could be uh, provide the increased attitude measurements for the PDR algorithms. And also for the stand for the INS it can be used to like navigate and uh, uh, or to make some body motion captures during Genesis outage uh, and also for the indoor navigation. Uh, and both of these two systems are uh, these two types of sensors could be used for the outdoor navigation and body motion capture.
the target is just general users. My second question um, relates to what I think your last word was that um, you, you said yesterday and today you want to use as many sensors as possible, which to me implies high accuracy and redundancy, but also very high cost and perhaps power constraint and you know power requirements and uh, who would who would need that so much that they would they would pay for this and that they would um, deal with trying to power this equipment and so on. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this can be used for hikers. Like for hikers, the, those kind of devices like can save them like <coughs> excuse me, they can save them like like uh, for its. Uh, GPS smartphone is about four hundred or five hundred dollars. But for our system, for the TDK sensors, uh, if I only use ICM sensors, it's about ten bucks, like ten dollars for one. For the camera, uh, I just mentioned we want to use as much sensor as possible because for this competition we have those sensors. That's why we try to use. And my Friends, I just summarize that, uh, summarize that at the end of the presentation, there is this uh, picture shows that actually we want to do wearable sensors. Like most of the wearable sensors are low cost MIME sensors. That means they are much more low cost than the, um, for example, the GPS here. Yeah, that's why I mentioned that we want to use sensors as much as possible because for the competition we have those kind of sensors. But for in uh, real, uh, I mean in real application, uh, if, we, we, if we want to low cost, uh, if we want to decrease the cost, then we need to consider about accuracy. If these people, like for me, if I go hiking, I will have GPS smartphone, I will have the touring ski safety tag, and those are 100,000. Also, sometimes it, it doesn't help because it assumes that I am awake, I need to send the uh, have a message myself. Yes, 